Hey guys, welcome back to Nimbata. So finally it's in early access. I'm pretty sure it's been in early access for about four days now. Depends on when I'll be putting out a video, but when I'm recording it's been four days. And also, as you can see, it, it has had two updates since the beginning of the early access. So that's also quite nice. So I guess they did that in four days, so that's also pat on the back for them. And so today I am going to be doing a logic gate tutorial. So I might just split up the logic gates because I'm pretty sure there's either 15 or 18 or something like that so I might just split in two or three videos just some shorter videos and then I just put in the description or in the comment section below at what minute each of the logic parts is just to make it for you guys much easier so let's get into it okay then so yeah I was right there are 15 logic gates and there are also three of these sort of add-ons or like so there's the color LED there's the logic splitter as well as the logic connector I'm most likely going to be splitting this into two or three videos because there are 15 of these logic gates so I could just do maybe five per episode or something like that so yep let's get into it okay then so let's start off with the button logic gate so this is kind of a useful one it's also really easy so let's say you set this output to let's just say Q it means that it is going to be outputting Q every single second just all the time forever until the block is actually destroyed so let's also set this small thruster to Q and this one as well so as you can see it is moving forward but if I go back to the editor get rid of this button or let's say I set it to E so it is going to be always outputting E and remember these are set to Q and so as you can see I am not moving at all and now I'll show you guys again if I set this to this one to E and this one would sit, stay on Q this one will be moving but the other one won't yeah it's kind of bait it's kind of easy basically the button you set it to it is going to be outputting it forever and ever and ever until the block is destroyed Okay then, so now let's do the if gate. Okay then, so let's say I set the input to um, E and I set the output to Q. Let's put these both onto Q, okay. So this means that whenever I press E, it is going to output Q. So let's just go into test flight. So as you can see, I'm not pressing anything. Let's say I press E, it is moving forward. But when I stop pressing E, it doesn't move forward. So let me explain it again. Basically, if the input is E, it is going to be outputting Q. The if gate, to be honest, has quite a lot of cool uses, so you can use it with these parts, so for example the sensors, so the distance sensor, so let's say if the range is 10 and it collides with something, so you can set it the detection to um, enemies, sumo border, own drone, terrain and enemies, terrain and stuff like that. So if it detects this in a range of 10, so this is the range of it, you can set it higher to 60 or to zero but at zero it doesn't work so the detection event let's say I set this to Q and this would collide with let's say an enemy it is going to be outputting Q and then let's say the input is Q or like actually let's just set this to E let's leave this on E so I'm not going to have to press anything if it is going to collide with an enemy or let's say terrain and enemies it is going to be outputting Q, which let's say will trigger something, so let's say a shield, or maybe a heater, or maybe a cooler, so or maybe just a thrust, or maybe a weapon, or just stuff like that. Or you could just use it with, let's say, a temperature sensor, so let's say your temperature goes to 10, then it is going to be outputting this key, so let's say that's E, or the same with an out meter, so... If the altitude is, let's say, 30, and then you can just set it to one of these buttons, let's say. So if, if you want it to go higher, then just do E. But if you want it to go lower, then let's just say just do Q, for example. So if you have thrusters that go up and down. You can also have the speed sensor. So if you're going, let's just set your limit to about 60. So if it reaches that limit, then it is going to turn on this button. So let's say I set this to E. It's going to do E. Okay then, so now it is time for the NOT gate. So this is also a useful but also kind of a basic gate. Let's just set the input to E and the output to Q. So it is going to be always on unless I press E. So let's, I'll show it to you guys. So as you can see I'm moving forward but once I press E it stops. Which means that if it's not being pressed then just do that. 
kind of also a useful one if you just want to stop or if you just want maybe a missile but you just I don't know there's quite a lot of cool stuff you could do with it let's just get into the next one It is now time for the AND gate, so as you can see it has two inputs, 1 and 2. Let's just set this to um, M and N, and let's put the output to uh, Q. Just so, basically means that if you press both M and N, it is going to output Q. But if you, let's say, only press M, it won't output anything, or vice versa, if you only press N, then it won't output anything. You have to press both at the same time. Let's go in. Okay, then, so as you can see, it's not moving at all. Uh, and if you look closely, when I'm only pressing M, only one is activated, and when I'm pressing N, only one of them is activated as well. But if I press both of them at the same time, then it starts moving. If I stop, then it stops moving again because it doesn't get activated so yeah that's also quite cool and useful Now it is time for the OR gate so similarly to the AND gate it has two inputs but it is a bit different so let's just set input 1 to let's say M this to N and this to Q so basically if you press just one then it is going to activate Q or activate this bigger circle which is going to output Q or if you only press N then it is also going to activate it or if you press both of the buttons at the same time so let me show you so as you can see I'm not pressing anything right now so it's not moving but if I press M it starts moving if I only press N it moves if I press both of them at the same time then it also works so that's quite nice Okay then, so because I'm feeling generous, as well as you guys have really wanted me to to show the logic splitter, basically, firstly, you just need an if gate, so, for, well, I'm just going to use an if gate just to show it to you guys, so I set the input to be E, and the out output to be Q, I have added on some thrust, all of the thrusters are set to be used on the button Q, I have also added on this small fuel tank right here, so basically the if gate is not going to be working on this vehicle right here because I'm using the logic splitter. Firstly you just need to place down a decoupler then you have to add on the logic splitter right after it and then you can add on how much stuff you want to the vehicle to or just to your other vehicle. So let's go into test flight. If I'm going to be pressing Q then the if gate is going to get activated. So as you can see only these three thrusters are being activated because right here I am using a logic splitter which does not allow this if gate to work work on this vehicle so let's say I decouple this thing and as you can see it still does not work but if I press Q which all of these thrusters are set to they also don't work because there's a logic splitter okay then so basically how this thing works is it has one if game right here so if the input is E then the output will be Q and I have also set all of these small thrusters to Q as you can see here so if you don't want the part to be controlled by the logic parts from the main drone you have to connect the small thruster, the weapon, the big thruster or the shield or whatever to the logic splitter so as you can see it is connected to the logic splitter let's go into test flight so if I'll press E it should work so they should turn on except this one so as you can see this one doesn't get turned on let's say I put the thruster onto the decoupler and I just get rid of this let's add back on some fuel so it doesn't have a logic splitter and as you can see it does work so that is just how you use a logic splitter you just have to make sure to connect the thruster, the weapon, the shield or whatever you don't want to be controlled by the logic part on the main vehicle to be connected to the logic splitter so that's quite useful to be honest in quite a lot of cases if you want to have a small drone just do some stuff for you maybe a little mining drone maybe a missile drone thing but you want to just set it to not be used by the logic gates on the main vehicle so that's also, that's also quite nice So right now instead of the logic splitter I have added on a logic connector but I don't really see the point in a logic connector. I'm probably doing something wrong or maybe it's not fully implemented yet but you don't really need it from what I understand. So just like in the last clip I have set it to E so as you can see it's going forward but I'm pretty sure you don't need it because actually let's just try this. So as you can see that works but let's say I attach this to that. Attach this to that, get rid of this and 
So as you can see that does still work. I just don't really understand why you need the logic connector. If there's any developers watching then just maybe if you could just explain it to me just so I could maybe make a tutorial on that as well. So I know how the logic splitter works but I'm just not sure if there's a point in the logic connector. Maybe it's not just fully implemented yet. Okay then guys so I'm going to end this here. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed and learned something new from this video. So in the next episode I'll be covering some more of these logic parts. So in this episode I covered the button. I covered the if gate, the not gate, the and gate, as well as the or gate, and also the logic splitter. But in the next episode, I'll probably be covering the nor gate, the nand gate, the xor gate, or the zor gate. I'm not sure how to say that. XOR. The xnor gate, the switch, and probably the on off switch. And then maybe in the last episode of this, I'll just cover maybe just the on off switch, and then the trigger impulse, the impulse giver, the long impulse giver, and the buffer gate. So right now, we just did the most basic ones, and I'd say these are probably the most useful ones and mainly because they are really easy to use. So thanks for watching again and see ya.